<clears throat> good morning, good afternoon, good evening, YouTubers. This is Jerry Diamond with How to Get Out of Babylon. And uh, uh, some product <laughs> stuff. Um, I had talked about electric chainsaws versus gas and had said, uh, yeah, you know, if you get something like this, you need to be able to replace the blade. You know, the the blade, meaning this, and the chain and everything. The chain guide, blade, whatever you want to call it. And, you know, uh, if you don't have that capability, all you're getting is a toy. Um, I use this, I cut some firewood with it, and it's definitely not a toy. Uh, I like it. I could actually run it with one hand. I don't feel like doing it right now because I'm hurting. But I could actually—I was actually literally running with my right hand and holding branches with my left hand. So I, I kind of wish it had a uh, like a. If they should have built it as small as it is, they should have built it as or could build it as a limbing saw. A limbing saw traditionally has uh, instead of having the trigger here and a bar here it has that's well, kind of how, how it is a little bit anyway th they could have balanced it better because uh, the weight is all in the motor so if they'd have balanced it a little bit better and put the uh, like put the handle here with the trigger face you know the in line with the saw that's what that's how a limbing saw runs and this is in line with the saw, but it's way at the back. If they could put the battery back further to counterbalance the motor. But even as it is, I was running it one-handed, so I was impressed. I was very impressed. Uh, another plus for getting a, a cordless saw is you're going to learn about and do. If you get a saw, learn about chainsaw safety. Because you can do a lot of stupid things with a chainsaw. And learning about safety is a whole lot cheaper than going to the emergency room with a pumping out artery. Because you cut your carotid artery. Or your femoral artery. Or any artery. So, but other than that, yeah. It's got like a plastic imitation dog teeth, which actually kind of work. Uh, let's see if you can see that. It's the wall there. Anyway, it's got, that's for when you're running it, you jam it into the log. Well, I'm going to either find some steel or something to sharpen those a little bit. You know, grind them down with the Dremel tool. Just so they actually kind of work there. They're kind of there just for show, for pretty. But anyway, I like it. Now you notice the color, orange and black. Very important colors. Oh, and I have a, you can get these on eBay, Oregon Chainsaw Guide Template, that's not the word, uh, very hard to find. Uh, you know, you find things really easy and the next time you get on there, you're looking for exactly what you're looking for. Not going to happen. It took me like half an hour to find the damn thing again. I thought I'd ordered them, I didn't, I just, I got a couple of them. Uh, Gorgon Chainsaw Guide Card uh, Measuring Measuring Tool, something like that, spacing. So, but it shows you the different, the holes in the middle there. Um, those are your file sizes. These are your bellow, what do you call it, the, uh, the belly between the teeth and the rakers. Some people call them rakers, they're depth gauges. In other words, if I line this up, I'd, I'd heard that this was a 3 h chain, and sure enough, if I line this up with the 3 h which is right here, that one, and if I hold that behind that, got to get up there a little bit more. Just kind of an educational thing for everybody me included. So if I hold that in front of the, see, or I'll, let's say I'll put it behind it. Find one, that one. OK. 
okay? It lines up. I uh, probably can't see that, but you get the idea. Just play with it. Get one. Deal with it. So, there's 043 and then 38. So that fits that. In other words, it, it's the same diameter. So, and then the, uh, the rakers, depth gauges, basically this little thing here are very important. That's what um, determines how deep this tooth, see, is taller than that. Watch Wrangler Star, Cody Crone, watch some good people. Uh, but your tooth is taller, so this, if your tooth wears down, you sharpen it, and you don't sharp, sharpen or flatten out your depth gauge, then your tooth's not going to cut anything. Your, your depth gauge is going to be running over the wood, and your chain is going to be smoking. It'll be hot, and it'll be smoking. Learn these things ahead of time. A whole lot cheaper than burning up chains and destroying bars. Your bar there. Um, so the new steel sharpener will automatically do two teeth and the depth gauge at the same time. So it'll, it sits over these two and does all three of them and does them perfectly. So big plus, especially for new people. Uh, watch a bunch of people have PFERD preferred is a German company that invented it maybe, but steel uh, chainsaws, you know, market one under their name brand. And uh, Cody Crone reviewed it, said, ah, I'd done a lot of gimmicks and gizmos and gadgets, and I'm not impressed. And by the time he was done, he was singing its praises and saying, this is going to save a lot of time in the field. He's going to give them his gifts to everybody. So here, these slots right here, is the uh, width. So my question is, okay, this is a 3H chain. Is it an 050? 050 is your heavy-duty a lot of your bigger saws have that. I put it on there, and there's play there. So it's an 043. It fits perfectly in that slot. So I have an 043 chain, 3H uh, chain, 043 diameter. And down at the bottom here is a number, because I had written to a guy on eBay and said, can you do a chain for the work saw, and he goes, just give me the number on it, and that is P0, P-O, like po post office, okay, P-O-12-43-SR, <clears throat> in parentheses, T, and then J-17, so, <laughs> that's it. So, my point of uh, learning chainsaw safety the difference between making a stupid mistake with this thing and making a stupid mistake and not, you know, not having bothered to learn about chainsaw safety with a gas-powered saw and accidentally whacking yourself, big difference, okay? Because, I mean, this, these are powerful. I'm not, not knocking that. Like I said, a Cody Crone put his dad's Makita, which is used, had been used a lot, uh, cordless Makita, up against... Um, his brand new Husqvarna. Uh, I think they were both 12 or 14 inch bars. And the Makita outcut the, the uh, gas powered. So, <clears throat> And Husky's one of the top brand names. Steel, Husqvarna are two of your very, very top dealers, manufacturers. So, not a toy, but still put this up against uh, learn with this versus learning with a 20-inch bar and a 3H chain and a heavy-duty gas-powered chainsaw, 43cc, that if you, well, like one thing, I had some kickback with this, and it whacked into something, and it wasn't me. I had uh, flipped over a trailer, you know, it was old trailer. My, I asked my friend, is there a trailer around here? Gone, and they said, yeah, there's one out behind the thing. It would have to be rebuilt. It would have to have this and that and the other thing. Well, by the time about 45 minutes went by, I had the thing up and running. <clears throat> the tires both held air, and they seemed to be holding air. They're 
cracked and rotted and stuff, but for what I want, just go out in the pasture and collect firewood. They're great. <clears throat> anyway, I rigged up a, uh, a hitch for it and out of an old uh, tie rod in, and, uh, whatever, a piece on the car that was laying around. I'll find a th one and seven eighths hitch. But anyway, <clears throat> I had kickback <laughs> and it slapped into the tire. Well, it didn't hurt it, but if it had been my leg, it uh, would have hurt it. So I was more careful after that. So it's just, you know, and I, I've, I've used a chainsaw before, but it's been a while. And you don't want it to slap into your leg or your thigh or your groin or your face. And that happens a lot. Boom. Wear a helmet. Wear a face shield. If at all possible, get the chaps. They're not that expensive. Uh, chaps are excellent for... Uh, <clears throat> they, what they are is they're, they're layers of Kevlar. And if you hit them with a chainsaw, it shreds. And it catches the teeth and stops the chainsaw. It's an instant stop situation. You might nick your leg, but a whole lot less than you would have if you had not been wearing the chaps. So they're a, a block and stop type of a situation with a chainsaw. Okay. <clears throat> and as long as we're on the uh, subject of black and orange stuff uh, and wood cutting and stuff, fist scars. <coughs> These are my little, not my smallest ones. I have a smaller pair that are plastic handle. I loved them. They were an anvil. They were geared, but they had an anvil. These are bypass, so the mean bypass meaning that the one blade bypasses this one and it cuts it off. The anvil ones had a plastic base. This was plastic, flat, big flat, and so they were um, cut off. Anvil, anvil. This was an anvil. This is the hammer. Boom. <coughs> but geared works like compound. Look at how much that jaws, that's a little one. Those jaws open up. That doesn't mean that you can cut that because there's not enough leverage here, but there's a lot more power than if it had just been your, your uh, normal stupid, don't ever buy stupid loppers that have no advantage, either a compound lever system or a geared lever system. And my big ones, <clears throat> one day my son was using them and he broke them. And they laid in the dirt, in the mud at the, farm there for probably five years and one day somebody said, Fisker's well, somebody told me one day somebody uh, said uh, Fisker's warranties that stuff for a lifetime I like really took a picture of it sent him it next few two days later in the mail this is what had broken two bolts boom back in business brand new pair of loppers so that thing I, anything I could get it on I could cut Except Hickory, and I think he probably got on Hickory, or he, or he was forcing him, and he torqued the handle sideways. Whatever, he broke them, <coughs> and they got replaced. So, uh, and then one more quick uh, black and orange since we're on show and tell and kid stuff. Yeah. Um, this is balancing act. Um, rigid. Black and orange. Expensive stuff. Nice stuff. But this <clears throat> is a chimney clean out thing. My friend John was describing the way his chimney chimney is set up and I I work for a Henley fireplace and chimney and fireplace in Denver and what he described to me was a bomb waiting to go off. So there's a lot of build up inside of a chimney, an oval area just above the stove and I'm not even going to go into it. So, these are flexible shafts. They lock in. They have a pin. You don't want to hit the chandelier. And a removal system. Basically, a nail or something would, you know, so you, in other words, you can go right or left, forward or reverse with it. <laughs> and then that thing, extremely aggressive. I mean, that is just a phenomenal piece of work there. You can cut them shorter or longer. So what I'm going to try to do is uh, hold it. I'll have a glove on. I'll hold it here. I'm going to remove some bark from a lot of the, the... A lot of the wood has this mossy junk on it, really light bark, and it's not good for anything. Uh, just stuff growing on it that's... Um, uh, moisture holds a lot of moisture. 
if you get the if you get your bark off, your wood's going to dry a lot quicker if you're not going to split it. Even if you are going to split it, it's good to take the wood the bark off. You know when the wood's cured when the bark falls off when you handle it. So I'm going to trigger this. Want to pluck a chicken? No. This would shred the skin off. This would just go right through the flesh. Might even go through the bones. So th these are phenomenal. And they're only like, for, for the price of, like I said, safety things, um, for the price of, uh, you know, a pair of chaps, save yourself at a trip to the emergency room. For the price of, you know, 50 bucks or something like right about $50 for something like this to save yourself uh, a burned down house, a blown up chimney, uh, several thousand dollars worth, worth of uh, repair, no question. So, but you can see the pin, this is the piece that goes in the drill, so you don't want to lose that. So I just leave it in one of the pieces and, or leave it, actually I leave it in the, the head here. That way the pieces are all the same length. Um, but, uh, I cannot. I'm trying to watch not hitting the chandelier. This tablet has seen its better days. And I've got to do something. I mean, you know, <laughs> the screen's broken. If, it, if I drop it again, and I've already dropped it twice, um, not good. All right. So, fireplaces. I'm trying to deal with those things. Um, Cleaning your bark off, splitting your wood allows it to cure quicker. Get a, uh, I would advise getting a, uh, a gauge, a meter, a moisture meter. Not that hard to come up with. eBay, less than 10 bucks. I had one. I wish I knew where it was. A laser gun. <laughs> I wish I knew where that was right now because I would like to stratify, check the air. It's 80, 70, 60, 50, 40, 30. <laughs> My feet are cold. I wonder why my feet are cold. It's 80 degrees in here. I mean, I walked into the trailer one time, and I was like, oh, man, it's hot in here. I took this off. I sat down. Oh, man, it's cold. I stood up and put it back on. Literally. I mean, that quick. <laughs> so the difference between standing up and sitting down was about 30 degrees, maybe. Um, yeah, walk in. Oh, man, I can <laughs> cool down. Oh, I need to warm up. So... Um, how else could you live and have so much fun? <laughs> so, all right, uh, that's it on the tools. Yeah, Fiskars rigid and works all black and orange. Uh, I don't know, whatever. There's other co companies that use that coloration, but good tools. Um, the work saw. I'll tell you what. I I love it. I like it. I really do. I'm going to clean it up and check it out, and I want to make sure I know how the oiling thing works because when you, the one thing I changed is you need to clean the little oiling port. There's a hole in the bar where the oiler hits right by the bar and where the motion takes it into the chain and the track on the bar. If that gets clogged up with, plugged with sawdust or something from your cutting, it's not going to work. Then your bar is going to get heated up, your chain is going to get heated up, the bar is going to get warped, it's going to get um, worn down. You also want to turn your bar over periodically. Watch professional chainsaw people, Cody Crone, Wrangler Star. Uh, one of the shout out to Billy Buck and Billy Ray Smith up in uh, another one, just I mean, I know I've talked about him before, but up in uh, British Columbia. The guy drives like a 50-year-old truck now. It's a, I'm guessing a 73. Maybe older. <clears throat> Might be a 60s. But has chainsaws that are antique. Cuts trees down with them. Huge trees. Teaches you how, a lot of things. And entertaining as all get out. A lot of his videos are half an hour, but it is just... Uh, and, he, and he's very well edited. Unlike me. <clears throat> you know, does a little dancing jig, you know, when he cuts a tree down or <clears throat> um, funny faces, funny stories. But if you don't listen to anything else, listen to him the day I almost died in the bush. That is one of the most phenomenal uh, near-death experiences. Not, not, he, not like he died and went to heaven and saw funny things, but he, he, was, he was very, very near-death. 
I mean, his leg was shattered. He got hit by a tree. He was cutting a tree down, just dropped a tree, I think, and a tree, a windfall or something, just slammed into him and just pulverized him. <clears throat> so his, his leg was actually hanging useless. He had to take his leg and throw it to get over. Anyway, l l listen to this story, if you don't listen to anything else in his. Um, and he's just... He's just a neat guy. I mean, he's out, he cuts firewood for old people, drops the trees and cuts them, and his YouTube channel supports him. Kind of what I like to see happen with my channel, you know. I mean, things have got to start galvanizing. People have got to take a step of faith, and that's what I want to get on, get this done, and get, get the, before I totally run out of voice and run out of time and run out of any, everything else, I want to get a, a message out. We've got to have faith. We've got to be able to be willing to act and do something. Unselfish. The kingdom of heaven is not built on selfishness. You know, everybody out there that I know of, a prepper, Christian, um, selfish, 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 selfish. They don't think about anybody but themselves. Uh, accusing other people, speaking evil of other people, hating other people, angry, angry enough to kill. I'm a Christian. Really? Why is it that none of the Sermon on the Mount has gotten into your heart? Why are you only thinking about yourself? Why is it that you, you know, get angry so easy? Why is it that you do nothing but gossip and backstab and speak evil of other people? Why is that? Why is that? I don't know. So, we have some serious issues. Remnant people, is, it's, we're going to be living in kingdom, under kingdom law. And under that economy, under king, a kingdom economy, it's going to be like, how can I ever repay you for everything you've done for me? How can I ever repay you for everything you've done for me? Well, you've done more for me than I've done for you. No, you've done more for me than I've done for you. Well, let's argue about it. Okay, let's just, you know, let's just hug and, you know... <laughs> That's the that's kingdom, and if you're not there, don't come. I mean, if you're not there, stay away. Um, I mean, I'm not saying that for real. I'm just saying if that's not where your heart is to help other people and to be unselfish and to give, uh, well, you're going you're gonna to show up before uh, the person that you have claimed or argued about and fought about to be your savior, and he's going to say, hey, what are you doing here? <laughs> well, I'm going to get into heaven. Want to be in your kingdom? Mm, sorry, we don't. We don't have anybody like you here. We have people that love people, not people that hate people. You're going the other way. You're going the other direction. You're a goat. Depart from me. I never knew you. But, 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 but. Remember when old Jerry was uh, hungry and you said, tough luck? And remember when uh, Thomas was you know, having such a hard time and you were like, man, he deserves everything he gets. And you remember when Paul was so sad and so depressed and you went, well, he might as well just kill himself. That was me. I don't, I don't know who you are. I, I don't claim you. Goodbye. Depart from me. You've been a worker of iniquity. Is that what you want to hear? Is that what you want to hear? I would suggest everybody that's hearing me, listening to me to some degree, some, in some way, shape, or form, change your life. For crying out loud, change it now. So, all right. Left. This is Jerry Diamond. You're the remnant, if you're listening to me. If, if, capital I, capital F, capital F, if and only if, you're listening to me, you're the remnant. If and only if, you're the remnant, you're listening to me. Goodbye.